welcome back in part 1 of this lecture we learned how to prepare for every birth how to decide whether a newborn re needs resuscitation if resuscitation is not needed what are the components of routine care and if resuscitation is needed what are the initial steps of resuscitation how they are performed and last but not the least how to administer effective positive pressure ventilation in this part 2 of the training module on neonatal resuscitation you will learn about the advanced resuscitative measures like intubation chest compression and medications so we have already seen that the neonatal resuscitation is a very orderly and systematic process where we follow sequential steps to restore life immediately after birth the newborn is assessed for any need of resuscitation in which case initial steps of resuscitation are performed if the baby does not respond then we start positive pressure ventilation now very few newborns will need advanced resuscitative measures beyond ppv but when they do we as neonatal caregivers must be well prepared so even after 30 seconds of effective positive pressure ventilation if heart rate is below 60 the newborn needs to be intubated and chest compression needs to be started so let us first learn about intubation well what are the situations where intubation is indicated now mainly when a newborn is not responding to ppv and has a heart rate below 60 even after effective ppv for 30 seconds chest compressions will need to be started and before starting chest compressions it is recommended that intubation should be done so that is one uh, indication additionally endotracheal intubation is indicated if ppv is required for a prolonged period of time maybe more than few minutes if ppv is ineffective then as a part of ventilation corrective steps of mr sopa or mr sopa the a there is alternative airway and stands for intubation and also in special circumstances like diaphragmatic hernia or in extreme prematurity so let us briefly see how do we prepare for intubation before the actual procedure of intubation it is important to have an estimate of two important attributes of the endotracheal tube first is what will be the appropriate size of the endotracheal tube and second how much will be the depth of insertion standard tables based on gestational age and weight can be useful guides and they have the benefit of knowing antenatally additionally actual measurement of nasotracheal length may help in guiding the insertion depth appropriate sized endotracheal tubes laryngoscope with blades and other supplies should be kept ready prior to the start of resuscitation laryngoscope with appropriately sized blade is held in the left hand by the intubator and while the assistant positions the head the intubator puts the uh, opens the mouth inserting the blade of laryngoscope from the right angle of mouth and sweeps the tongue to the left and then advances the blade till the tongue base now once the blade of laryngoscope is at the tongue base the blade needs to be lifted to visualize the glottis this is the most important step it is very important that a lifting movement is done as shown in the uh, on the screen and not a rocking movement visualization of glottis is the most important prerequisite for successful intubation we will see in the next slide how the glottis looks like but remember that the assistant also plays a very very crucial role all this while the assistant may provide suction if needed so assistant is not just sitting back he is very active and he may provide suction if needed Ausc should auscultate the heart rate and should indicate to the intubator by tapping if the heart rate start, uh, starts going down and he should keep a time of 30 seconds which is the uh, which is the recommended time for intubation a correctly visualized glottis will look something like an inverted v further procedure should be undertaken only if the glottis is clearly visible if there is any doubt adequate time should be given to visualization of glottis as far as you are within the permissible limit of 30 seconds because no visualization or poor visual visualization of glottis is the commonest reason for unsuccessful intubation now as soon as the glottis is visualized the assistant hands over the tube and the intubator inserts the tube from the right angle of the mouth to a predetermined depth and removes the laryngoscope while holding the tube tightly against the hard palate to avoid dislodgement the assistant hands over the ppv device to the intubator then intubator will give few breaths and confirm the tube placement and then finally secure the tube 
So coming back to our neonatal resuscitation algorithm, when the heart rate is below 60, even after 30 seconds of effective PPV, we performed endotracheal intubation, we increase the oxygen to 100% and start high quality chest compressions coordinated with effective positive pressure ventilation. So to understand the further details of how to perform chest compressions and how to coordinate them with PPV, let us watch this brief video demonstration. Now after 30 seconds of effective positive pressure ventilation that moves the chest, if the heart rate is less than 60 per minute, this is the time when we need to add chest compression to the positive pressure ventilation. However, before starting chest compression, we need to do certain things. One of them is intubation. So this baby is already intubated as you can see. Second thing is increasing the FiO2 to 100%. So this you can see here, this bag has oxygen attached here and the reservoir is attached so that the FiO2 increases to 90 to 100%. When we start chest compression, the location of chest compression is that should be the lower half of the sternum so that you can draw an imaginary internipple intermammary line and below that you can start chest compression in the midline. However, we need to take care not to press on the ziffy sternum. The recommended technique now is two thumbs or two hands technique where the two thumbs are used to uh, do the compression whereas the fingers support the back from behind. Next important thing is how much to press. So the chest compression should uh, press the chest so much that almost one third of the anteroposterior diameter is compressed. We should also remember to allow complete chest recoil. Now keeping these things in mind, another thing is you can do chest compression like this. However, since the baby is already intubated, it is preferred to do chest compression from the head and side so that this field is open for preparing for umbilical venous catheterization. So now I am going to demonstrate chest compression coordinated with positive pressure ventilation. For every three chest compressions, one ventilation is needed and this three is to one. This uh, four events should finish in two seconds so that in one full minute, we finish 90 compressions and 30 ventilations. For achieving this rate, the mantra that is used is one and two and three and squeeze and where in one we will compress and we will release, two we will compress and we will release, three we will compress and we will release and on squeeze we will give ventilation and release. Now I am going to demonstrate this in a coordinated manner. One and two and three and break and one and two and three and squeeze and one and two and three and squeeze and one and two and three and squeeze and this should be done for one full minute before checking the heart rate. Now, even after 60 seconds of high quality chest compressions coordinated with effective positive pressure ventilation through endotracheal tube and with 100% oxygen, if the heart rate remains below 60 per minute, that is the time to resort to drugs. So what drugs are available to us for use in the delivery room? You have to keep in mind only two drugs, adrenaline and volume expanders. Well, adrenaline as you know is indicated when the heart rate remains below 60 beats per minute even after 60 seconds of high quality chest compressions coordinated with effective PPV through endotracheal tube with 100% oxygen. A central IV route is always preferred and the best central vein available in neonatal uh, scenario is the umbilical vein. The recommended dose of adrenaline is 0.1 to 0.3 ml per kg of 1 in 10,000 adrenaline solution. And it should be quickly followed with a normal saline flush of 0.5 to 1 ml. So remember that the available concentration in India is 1 in 1000. So at least once a day, we must prepare a stock solution of 1 in 10,000 by diluting adrenaline 10 times. Now only if it doesn't delay the IV dose, then while the IV access is being obtained, you may give endotracheal dose of adrenaline. The dose will be 0.5 to 1 ml per kg of 1 in 10,000 followed by few PPV breaths. And if such endotracheal dose is given down the line during resuscitation, you have to disregard it and give an IV dose as soon as the umbilical venous access is secured and heart rate is found to be below 60. We must remember that adrenaline takes some time to show its action. So after the IV or IO dose, Time should not be wasted in checking the heart rate. So as soon as the dose of adrenaline is given, 
you must continue chest compression and positive pressure ventilation at 3 to 1 ratio. Only after 60 seconds of this coordinated chest compression and ventilation, check the heart rate. So in such scenario, if after 60 seconds of adrenaline dose, first dose of adrenaline, heart rate is still below 60, quickly recheck effectiveness of PPV and chest compression. That means recheck the chest rise by positive pressure ventilation, recheck 100% oxygen, ensure chest compression is being given to one third the depth of AP diameter and recheck coordination of chest compression to ventilation uh, is at the recommended ratio of 3 to 1. And if all these things are taken care of and still heart rate is below 60, which means there is no response to adrenaline. And additionally, if there are signs of poor perfusion like pale skin or weak pulses or delayed capillary filling time or history of acute blood loss during delivery, then consider volume expanders. What volume expanders you will consider? Best recommended volume expander is normal saline. If there is definite history of fetal anemia, then O negative unmatched packed red cells can also be given. The dose of volume expander is 10 ml per kg over 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes through umbilical venous or interosseous route. But remember, it should never be given through peripheral IV route. And in spite of all efforts, that is coordinated high quality chest compressions and effective positive pressure ventilations through endotracheal tube with 100% oxygen and adequate medications, if the heart rate remains zero for more than 20 minutes, the latest guidelines of 2020 I recommend 20 minutes. If the heart rate remains zero for more than 20 minutes, then the resuscitation may be stopped. So friends, what are the take home messages? Ventilation is the most important part of neonatal resuscitation. Other advanced measures like chest compression, intubation, medications, etc. will be required for only less than 1% of newborns. If chest compressions are needed, we must ensure that endotracheal intubation is done, oxygen is increased to 100%, Someone starts preparing for umbilical venous access and drugs. And remember that heart rate is checked only after 60 seconds of coordinated high quality chest compressions and effective PPV to avoid frequent interruptions during checking of heart rate. Now, even after 60 seconds of coordinated high quality chest compressions and effective PPV, if heart rate remains below 60, then IV adrenaline should be given as a fast bolus, IV bolus with a saline flush. Until IV access is obtained, you may give intratracheal adrenaline, but then that's, that dose should not be counted. After 60 seconds of adrenaline dose, if heart rate is less than 60 and there is history of bleeding or signs of shock, then consider volume expanders. Basically normal saline, 10 ml per kg. And if in spite of well-coordinated high-quality chest compressions and effective PPV through endotracheal tube with 100% oxygen and adequate medications, if heart rate remains zero after more, uh, for more than 20 minutes, then the resuscitation may be stopped. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.